Like first and foremost, we always like to give praise and honor to the God of Israel, of our forefathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And also we like to say spiritual Israel just as well as natural Israel. Spiritual Israel is with other nations that come under the banner of Israel, which is about Gentiles and Hamites or those different nations beside Israel. And uh, a lot of times we like to say that because most people think in our groups that groups similar to us that only Israel will be saved. But if you come under the banner of Israel, you will be saved. But I'm going to give you the title of the message today. The title of the message is Peace, Peace, and Sudden Destruction. Peace, Peace, and Sudden Destruction. And the reason why I titled this message is because of what's going on in the world. If you got the phone, tell them to vibrate. What's going on in the world? You got the world so up, so tight, they're looking at this European common market. And they don't really understand about this common market. They're going to come in play. It's going to be 10, 10 countries. All it is is the, the 10 countries that's over there in the UK. And you got, you know, I can't give them all to you at one time, but I know they are 10. And these 10 nations are the 10 toes in Daniel prophecy. Whereas he going to, um, God showed us the beginning from sort of the beginning also the end in the same books of Daniel and Revelation. And what we're going to do today is just try to make you understand what's going on in the world today. How it compares to the Bible. People don't have a clue in the world today when it comes to end time events. Which is Bible prophecy. The preacher, the preacher should be telling us what's going on in the world like I'm doing today. But they're not concerned in this, concerned about this. All they're concerned about money. Just like the world, they're concerned about money. The only time you get most people to start talking if you start affecting their money. And that's when the world started talking about this market. If y'all paying attention in the news, they all talking about, man, what we gonna do? If Britain leaves the uh, European common market, money ain't gonna be right. That is far from what God is trying to tell us in the story about the end time. That coming market is going to be up and running all the way to Jesus come back. He's the only one going to be able to take that down. And they're going to assume power. Assume power over the whole world. And they're going to come at all of us who are trying to keep these laws. Come at us. And for black people and so-called Israel, we shouldn't even be worried about that anyway. The reason why we shouldn't be worried about it is because when they, when the Gentile nation's money is threatened, when it goes down, it's better for us. Why? Because when their money is strong, they will most time will not give you a loan. They won't give you a house loan, a car loan, or anything. But when they need Israel money, they give you a loan for everything. So stop getting into the world way of thinking. Keep your eye on the book so you can understand what's going on when it's time for us to get out of here. Stop worrying about the money. That ain't going to be no case for us. It's not. But we're going to turn to 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 and 1. These Gentile nations are going to be around all the way until Jesus comes. They're going to be here until Jesus comes. The European economy market. It's going to be here. And I'm going to break it down to you so you can understand what we're talking about this European common market. That's why I titled this Peace, Peace, and Sudden Destruction. Because when sudden destruction hit, the world ain't going to do nothing about it. It's going to be just like the day of days of Noah. It's going to be just like Sodom and Gomorrah. It's going to be just like last day. It's going to be like that. Everybody's going to be doing what they want to do and having fun according to the world. But the people that have some knowledge and understand this book, they're waiting for the boom to hit. They're waiting for it to come. Certain events are going to take place. So we're just trying to edify and educate you on this. So you want to be worried about who's going to be the president. Is Trump going to be the president? He's going to be in trouble. We're like, man, what president ever did some of us? Right, the one that black, he, he did the, the most wrong of all of them. 
Moses rolled all of them. And people don't like to hear that, but that's what it is. You look at the stuff according to the scriptures, Barak, he did a horrible thing. Very hard. But we don't get into all that today. We're just trying to show you the end time. First Thessalonians chapter 5 and verse 1. If you don't know what it is, go to your table of contents in front of the Bible. Go ahead, brother. But of the times and the seasons, brethren, ye have no need that I write unto you. For yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. You understand? He said the day of the Lord cometh so, so cometh as a thief in the night. Mm -hmm. That means that it's going to suddenly come to the one that's not watching. Mm -hmm. The ones that don't have ears to hear. It's going to come then. It ain't going to come to me like that. I understand what's going on. Y'all understand what's going on. We just waiting for it to happen. Go ahead, bro. Well, for when they shall say peace and safety, then suddenly destruction cometh upon them as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. See, that's the problem with the world. When they're going to be saying peace, peace, the man of sin going to be in the land, which is the Pope of Rome, he's going to be dictating the whole world on a new world order. And they're going to say, man, everything is good. The Christians get along with the Jews, so-called Jews. The Muslims get along. Everybody get along. God said, that's when sudden destruction on him. People not watching. They ain't watching the right thing. They ain't looking at seeing everybody going to get along. Jesus said, I come not to send peace. I come to send destruction upon this earth. And when you understand that, when they start hollering peace, you're looking around like, oh, okay, what's going on in Bible prophecy? And that's why we're here today, mm -hmm. to see that. And he said, he said, as a woman tra traveling upon a woman with child, there shall no, they shall not escape. That means that the one that gets stuck here in this tribulation period, you ain't gonna be able to escape. Because once God put the angels outside the wilderness, you can't come in, nothing can't come out. We're gonna touch on that. Go ahead, bro. But ye, brethren, are not in darkness, that that day should overtake you as a thief. Ye are all the children of light. Yes, sir. And the children of the day. Go ahead. We are not of the night, nor of the darkness. Understand that they're going to overtake us because we're reading. We understand what's about to happen. Go ahead, brother. Read a little louder. Therefore, let us not sleep as do others. Yes, sir. But let us watch and be sober. He's not talking about a little sleep when you get in your bed. Not talking about that. He's talking about you sleep in, in knowledge. You go into the Sabbath class, you listen, and then when you leave the Sabbath class, you don't remember Jack. You just go about your regular day like I punch the clock like I'm going to work. Take these things, that they take these scriptures that's in the Bible, meditate on them. So you have enough faith in the end to leave. You can't, I can't have faith for you. Nobody can have faith for you. You gotta have faith for yourself. If you don't understand this for yourself, you'll be stuck here. And thinking like, oh, I got rights. They show us every day. What rights a black man and black woman got in this world? They killing us from the jail over nothing. You think in this time, at the end, they're gonna give you rights, they're gonna strip your rights. It's gonna be a dictatorship. That's what we're gonna find out. Keep going. Verse 7. For they that sleep, sleep in the night. Yes, sir. They that be drunken are drunken in the night. Yes, sir. But let us who are of the day be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love, mm -hmm. and for in heaven the hope of salvation. This is what it is. We sober. When he's talking about drinking, he's talking about literally drinking. He's talking about drinking this false doctrine. That's right. Understand this, it's metaphors that you speak, that, that's in the Bible when you read. Every time you say, eat, drink, sleep, it does not mean literally you sleeping or eating. You eating my doctrine right now. You drinking my doctrine right now, which is coming from this book. I'm, educate, I'm educating you, edifying you. And also these false prophets do the same thing. But you got to make it sure in your mind that you can work it out. Who's telling you the truth? Who's 
telling you a lie. And the only way we can prove that a prophet, a minister, or whoever telling the truth, they got the line up with you. Period. Go ahead. Verse 9. For God has not appointed us to wrath, but to obtain salvation by the Lord Jesus Christ. Yes, sir. He's not appointed us to wrath. God has not appointed us to wrath, but to obtain salvation by the Lord Jesus Christ. That's what it is, y'all. He ain't appointed us to wrath, meaning that because these people are doing this stuff to us, he don't want you to go out in the world and get your hands dirty. Understand how to recognize the traps in the world. What I mean by traps is God giving us a holy law to follow. If we follow these laws, these laws of God, we know not to lie, we know not to steal, we know not to kill. That'll keep us out of these people's way. But when you go out there thinking you got the same rights as they got, the same rights as the white man or the Gentile man, you're gonna get busted in the head every time as black men and women. And I'll be getting, getting today. But we understand in this prophecy of sudden destruction. Let's go to Matthew chapter 24 and 1. Let's break this, let's break this down and see what's coming to the end. Don't y'all want to know what's going to happen in the end so you can protect yourself? Come on, brother. Amen. You better want to know. You can't be like the ostrich being chased by the lion. Oh, I'm just going to put my head in the ground and that lion going to go away. That's how people do it. Outside our mind, I don't hear it, ain't got to worry about going to let that happen to you. That's a lie. That's a lie. It's going to happen. And most people don't understand that. You can't have the Oshman in the line. Oshman going to put his head in the, in the ground, thinking that the line they're going to eat him, he's going to eat him up. Eat him up, just like the word. God give us this knowledge so we won't get ate up. Let's look and see what Jesus said. Matthew chapter 24 and verse 1. Just looking at the time of the end. Go ahead. And Jesus went out and departed from the temple, and his disciples came to him for to show him the building of the temple. Yes, sir. And Jesus said unto them, See ye not all these things? Verily I say unto you, that shall not be here left one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down. That's the time when Solomon had his temple up. And Jesus said, this temple is going to be destroyed in the end time. Or what's going to happen to Israel? This happened in 70 AD when they destroyed Solomon's temple. When Titus and uh, Van Spatia came in Israel and uh, destroyed the temple. and killed a lot of the Israelites. Go ahead. Verse 3. And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, uh -huh. The disciples came unto him privately and said, Tell us, when shall these things be? And what shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? He would, they want to know the sign of, his, sign of his coming and the end of the world. Because they want it to be protected. Just as well as you want to be protected. We need to know what this destruction is going to do to us. And Jesus is going to tell them, keep going. And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. That's the first one. He, first thing he said, Take heed that no man deceive you. That means that a man like me come up here and tell you, You ain't got to worry about that, brother. You're going to be raptured out of here. That's what the doctrine of these Sunday churches are. They said, The book of Revelations and all the end time, don't worry about that. God going to steal his people off the earth. If you believe that, you deserve the destruction. Because this is not what he said here. Right. Come on, brother. Go ahead, brother. Let's see how they're going to deceive you. Go ahead. Verse 5. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. Who going to come in his name? Who called my Jesus' name now? All these so-called Christians. Jesus, Jesus, they Jesus you to death. Jesus said that the Holy Spirit told me to tell you this. All this stuff, and it's not written in the book, this stuff they're telling you. 
That's why we read so much here, so you can understand. This is not Jeff's word. I ain't going to sit up and tell you what the Holy Ghost is going to say. I'm going to read you what the Holy Ghost uh, said. Period. So you can check me out. See if I'm telling you the truth. Jump down to verse 15. But it gives us a something a clue here. So we understand what the end of the world and how it's going to go down. Go ahead. When ye therefore shall see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet, yes, sir. stand in the holy place, whoso readeth, let him understand. See, if you're a New Testament church, New Testament Christian, you don't know what they're talking about. Because they tell you that the Old Testament is done away with. So if you can't read Daniel, you won't know the time of the year. They tell you that the Old Testament be done away with. But he said, whosoever read it, let him understand. That's right. Understand. Go ahead. Then let them which be in Judea flee into the mountain. Yes, sir. Let him which is on the housetop not come down to take anything out of his house. So you got to understand, this is a very, very important prophecy that we know about. He telling you, once you see the abomination and desolation standing in the holy place, you better take off running to the place of safety. Why? Jump down to verse 21. Go ahead. For then shall be great tribulation, yes, sir. such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time. No, not ever shall be. You all know what that means when he say that? Nothing that happened to this world can compare what's going to happen in the future time of this prophecy. I think slavery was the worst thing ever happened to us and the world. Of people being, being raped, castrated, sold to different nations. That's the worst thing that ever I can ever fathom in my mind that I can read about. And he said, it won't compare to this great tribulation. Understand what it is. That's why I tell you young folks and old people, keep watching roots. Watching these 12 years of slavery. Watch these things because you'll get a kind of visual of what's about to go down. It's going to be worse than that. Worse. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, brother. 22. And except those days should be short, there should no flesh be saved. See what he said? Except those days be short. This beast or this false prophet or whoever he is going to wreak havoc upon the earth. The scariest movie you can ever imagine, Saw. I think about Saw. I ain't never seen Saw, but I think about the movie Saw. That's up there. That this guy doing the movie, movie Saw, it happened. It happened in the Roman uh, Inquisition. Where they used to, Spanish Inquisition, where they used to torture people for not keeping the, the Pope's law. This stuff happened. You can read it read for yourself. All that stuff that man doing in Saw, where do you think they get it from? The Roman Catholic Church. That's why you see the Roman Catholic Church, they have dungeons in the bottom of their church. They used to persecute people for not keeping this doctrine. This documented history, but we ain't gonna get into all that. Read that again, verse 22. And except those days should be shortened, yes, sir. that should no flesh be saved. But for the elect's sake, those days shall be shortened. The son, he said, for the elect, say, those days shall be short. Meaning, us, the elect, Israel, is going to be short. Because if they're not short, this man will kill everything. Why? Back then, you didn't have a weapon that can kill everything. Now, you got a weapon that can kill everything. Nuclear weapons. Every country got one. So, you get mad with America, America get mad with Russia, Israel, uh, Korea, everybody got nuclear weapons and just start firing them, no flesh will survive. So God said, I got to intervene here. I got to make sure I come back and, and, and shut this thing down. Mm. But keep going. Then if any man shall say unto you, Lo, here is Christ, or there, believe it not. For yeah. that's Go ahead. For that shall arise false Christ, false prophets, and shall show great signs and wonders, in so much that if it were possible, they shall deceive the very light. The reason why we have to read that because it's going to be a Christ come. Jesus warned you about this other Jesus, and this other Jesus is going to come in his holy temple and call himself God. 
which is going to be a Roman Catholic Pope. I'm not saying it's going to be this one, but he's going to stop all this stuff. they taking up animal sacrifices right now in Rome, training these people to take up animal sacrifice. You know when Jesus died on the cross, he said he'd get away with it, right? right? So when this man, the man of sin, come back, they taking up the animal sacrifice over there. He going to say, oh, Christ is on the scene right now. Y'all stop doing that. Y'all pray through me. What they tell you? What the Pope tell you? They got confessing chambers, right? They confess they sin to this man. He assuming Christ's position. He been assuming Christ's position, but it's not worldwide yet. It's going to be worldwide. They're going to be looking for a leader. A leader in the world. And he's going to be the one. It's already been written. Now verse 15 said, when you, shall, when, you, when you therefore shall see the abomination of desolation spoken by Daniel the prophet, stand in the holy place, who shall read, let him understand. So we got to go back to Daniel and read this. Let's go to Daniel. Let's go to Daniel chapter 7. So we can understand. All you got to do is just follow directions. Most people don't want to follow directions, especially Israel. King Darius and King Cyrus. All these were so-called white people or 
or Gentile. They ran the whole world at one point in time in history. This, this, I tell people this, the Bible is not a religious book. It's a history book telling you future history from the past and from the future. They ain't going toward the future. Keep going. After this, I beheld and lo another, like a leopard, which had upon the back of it four wings of fire. Yes, sir. The beast had also four heads, and dominion was given to it. This is when Alexander the Great ran the whole world. And when he died, his four generals took over um, for him. That's what he said, these four, um, but keep going. He's gonna say to tell you about the four. Verse. These four heads, excuse me. And they had dominion was given unto them. Go ahead. Verse seven. After this I saw in the night vision, and behold, a fourth beast, uh -huh. dreadful and terrible and strong exceedingly. Yes, and it had great iron teeth. It divided and break in pieces and stamp the residue with the feet of it. And it was diverse from all the beasts that were before it. And it had ten horns. Yes, sir. This is the Roman Empire. This Roman Empire. Go ahead. I considered the horns. When you talk about horns, you're talking about power. These horns had power. Go ahead. I considered the horns, and behold, there came up among them another little horn, before whom there were three of the first horns plucked up by the root. Yes, sir. And behold, in this horn were eyes like the eyes of man, and a mouth speaking great things. Yes, sir. This is wrong still. Go ahead. I beheld till the thrones were cast down, and the Ancient of Days did sit, whose garment was white as snow, and the hairs of his head like the pure wool. His throne was like the fiery flame, and his wheels as burning fire. So this tells us two things. How long this how long this Roman rulership gonna be here? He said, I beheld till the throne were cast down. And the Ancient of Days did sit, whose garments was white as snow, and his hair of his head was pure like wool. Who is that? Jesus. He's going to be, this Roman or the European economic community going to be here until he comes back and defeat them. This is how it go down. Well, people looking at the common market saying, oh, it's the end of the world. No, it's not. They're going to be around. It's going to be 10. These are the 10 toes. Jump down to verse uh, 15. Go ahead. I, Daniel, was grieved in my spirit in the midst of my body, and the visions of my head troubled me. Just like, just like y'all are right now, Daniel was just like this. He's like, man, what is this man talking about up here? While I'm here, well, what is he talking about? So Daniel didn't know at the time, so he had to go to the Father and petition him or ask him in prayer, what all this stuff mean? I don't understand it. All this stuff is metaphor. Like y'all say, LeBron James is a beast? Is he a little beast? Is he an animal? No. He just possesses a certain level of power that certain basketball players don't possess. Y'all categorize him as a beast, just like Rome, just like Babylon, just like all these different types of Gentile dynasties. They're the rulers of the world. Like right now, Rome is ruling. But then you have a problem with this. He didn't understand. Go ahead. Verse 16. I came near to one of them that stood by and asked him the truth of all this. Yes, sir. So he told me and made me know the interpretation of the things. See, one thing about it, he came, this angel came to Daniel and gave him the, the interpretation. Just like I interpret scriptures, just like this angel going to interpret these prophecies. And he's going to tell him something. Go ahead. These great beasts, which are four, are four kings, which shall arise out of the earth. He told me, these great beasts, not just they animals, they are four kings. We just went through them. We got Nebuchadnezzar, King Darius, Alexander the Great, and their four generals, which is created the Roman Empire. This is history right here in the Bible. Before they came up with this, God already told us that this was going to go down. I know this is a little meat for you, but we got to learn this. That's right. We got to learn this. Amen. Amen. Go ahead, brother. Verse 18. But the saints of the Most High shall take the kingdom and possess the kingdom forever, even forever and ever. 
This is what's going to go down. The saints are going to take the kingdom. But the saints are in the world, so-called saints. Where are they trying to go? Everybody trying to go to heaven. Give me that remote. Give me that remote over there. This is what it is. 